Oh, oh, hi. Uh, this is a bit embarrassing, but, uh, I kind of forgot to write an intro. Yep, there's nothing to see here. You might as well skip forward. Yeah, all right. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, I'm not kidding. There's no intro. Hmm. Okay. You're still here? Th there's nothing to see. Mm, you heard. Move along, please. Today is the day. Welcome back everybody to Minecraft The Journey with me, Bugman CX, in Minecraft Beta 1.9 pre-release 4. Today is the day we upgrade to pre-release 5. And as you can see in my hand here, I've got my double slab block, which I got with my Silk Touch pickaxe. I've been preparing all of the items that I need to collect in this version before we move up to the next one, because there are certain blocks that you just can't get after pre-release 4. So we've got to be prepared, right? Otherwise, we'll run out of these fantastic blocks in the future. But there is one more that I completely overlooked. Something else we need to pick up with our Silk Touch pickaxe. Let's have a look at all of the items we've picked up with Silk Touch in pre-release 4 so far. We've got the stone, the glass, the leaves, the grass block, the redstone, coal, diamond and lapis ores. We have a melon block, we have the cracked stone bricks and the mossy stone brick variations, bookshelf, glowstone, brown mushroom block, red mushroom block and the mycelium and the ice block. But we also have a few special blocks down here as well. We have the double slab right here and the monster spawner as well. Over here we have lit redstone ore and the lit furnace as well. You can get these blocks if you just pick them up while they're in their lit state. The furnace being lit like this and the redstone being all speckledy like when you walk over it and things like that. But what is this other block? You might be able to consider it a little bit like a spawn egg. Sorry chicken. Because technically it contains a mob inside. Just a hostile one. I'm not even sure if you could call it hostile because it hardly does any damage. It's this guy here, the little silverfish. This is obviously the spawner in the end portal room, but we can explore the rest of this stronghold here and see if we can encounter any of those mysterious blocks that happen to spawn silverfish. No, that's not one there. I thought it was. And if we can find one, we should be able to pick it up with our Silk Touch pickaxe. Here, silverfish. Here, little silverfish. Come on, silverfish, where are- oh, oh, we found one, we found one, okay. So, let's just check, we've got the Silk Touch pickaxe here, we absolutely do, and as you saw before, this one was a slow break, and this one was a very, very fast break. That's definitely a silverfish in there, so let's see if we can pick it up. No, no, we can't. Why doesn't it work? I thought this worked. Someone told me it worked. Ah, oh, that was definitely Silk Touch, right? What's going on? Ow. Well, that was all pretty confusing, but I've taken a second look at this and I think I understand what has happened here. I definitely broke this block over here, which was one of these, a stone brick block, or at least it appeared to be, and then this little creature <laughs> popped out. But then this block here popped into my inventory and I'm not really sure where it came from. And it resembles a stone block, doesn't it? But I definitely didn't break a stone block, so how did I end up with this? If you pop out of the block, the block you pop out of is supposed to be destroyed. So have a look at this in my inventory. We have a stone block with no name. So do we have a silverfish spawn block in our inventory here? Let's let's try it out. Oh, oh stop, stop pushing. But that definitely looked like it, didn't it? Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. It just had to be done. Okay, let's try it out. Wow. Look at that, another silverfish. So technically you could make, I think, infinite silverfish from this. I might have to try that out a bit later, but for now you're going away and I'm gonna keep hunting around for more silverfish blocks. Ugh. Oh, this has to be the most annoying job ever. Ah. I think it's time we did some experiments with these new silverfish blocks that we've found. To be honest, I had completely different plans for this episode today, but sometimes you just roll with what the game gives you. 
I've created this little pen down here with the dirt and the sand so that no silverfish can bury themselves into any block unless I place it in here because silverfish can only bury themselves into stone type blocks. So if I take one of these now, which should contain a silverfish and place it down, it looks like a regular stone block, but when I break it, of course, we get a silverfish. Now, if I place down a stone brick block like this, this should give the silverfish somewhere to bury itself into. In order to let it do that, I just noticed it's getting to nighttime, so I better be quick about myself. I need to take myself out of the tracking range of the silverfish. So if I just stack up like this, up to about a height like this, probably just, there it goes, it's already gone inside. So let's go back down. And before the mobs come out and start attacking me, let's have a bit of a look and see exactly what we've got. Yep. Look at how fast that is. That is another silverfish spawn egg. So technically, if I break this with Silk Touch again, I get a silverfish and a silverfish block. I started out with 10 and now I've got 10 again and a new silverfish, which means if I place another block in here and then just leave the area, this should bury itself in here and I can have unlimited silverfish. I'm literally a bug daddy. So much so that I've had to build myself a little nursery over here just to look after them all because, well, I've got this giant ravine and I've got to fill it with stuff. So I've built here the Silverfish Silk Touch Farm for Beta 1.9 pre-release 4. Now this is the only version in which this farm is going to work. And as I said, I just built it for fun, really, just to explore the mechanic a little bit and fill out the base a little bit more. But here we have these little, can we call them hatcheries or chambers where the silverfish will exist and here you can see we've got two of them and these two appear to be empty but they're not empty the silverfish that were in here have just buried themselves into these blocks above right here and if we use the silk touch trick you'll see exactly what happens when we break one of these blocks the silverfish spawns and if you can see it in there there's also a silverfish stone block right there so i can just reach in there and pick that up <laughs> and yes they bite a little bit and i can repeat that process for all of these little chambers like this and um yeah sometimes they go in the back corner there and i can't reach them so they're a little bit of a write-off but the farm is so efficient it doesn't really matter so i'll just i'll just keep going this one is also ready for harvesting as well and we'll pop a block up there that's the next step uh oh i can't reach that one either maybe i can get it in the corner Yep. <laughs> so now we just replenish all of these chambers with blocks like this. Eh, not like that. Like that. And the farm is ready to go. This one should bury itself in the block in due time. But for now, they're all tracking me. So I need to get out of the area. What I usually do is just head around here and do a little bit of a lap of the base. Or I can come up here and put some junk away in the chests. Or I can check on the lava or I can look at the melons and then when I've finished all of that I just head back over and hopefully all of them have buried themselves inside of the stone blocks or maybe some of them have it doesn't really matter how many have as as long as there's something to harvest and as we come over here we can see one two three have buried themselves inside of the blocks so again we just repeat this process again and again over and over until I've got more silverfish than I could ever dream of. One more right here. This one's going to bite, isn't it? I know it. Yeah, they always bite. Okay. <laughs> and in this chest here, out in this chest here, is where I've been storing these silverfish spawn eggs. So you can see I've now got myself just under a stack, or actually just about a stack and a half with all of these as well. So that's pretty good going for about an hour's worth of silverfish farming. But that is probably enough shenanigans for pre-release 4. What do you say we upgrade to pre-release 5? Oh, feels so good. Let's explore what's new. I want to talk a little bit about time. Pre-release 4 came out two weeks before pre-release 5 in terms of the 2011 release schedule. And we were in pre-release 4 for a considerable amount of time. There were so many features to explore, it took me many, 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 many episodes and many real-world months to get through just that version. And it's only been two weeks in terms of the actual real-time development between pre-release 4 and pre-release 5. But here we are, pre-release 5, and you can tell this because up in the top left-hand corner is our old friend, the version number 
it's returned because it wasn't here in the last version, or maybe the version before that, I can't quite remember when it was removed, but during this beta 1.9 pre-release cycle, I think it was pre-release 4, they removed the version number from the top left hand corner and you could only see it when you pulled up the F3 screen. But here in pre-release 5, I'm not sure why, but it seems to have made a comeback and it'll definitely be disappearing before we get to release 1.0, but I was quite surprised to see that. But what are some of the main differences between pre-release 4 and pre-release 5? As usual, there are new features and we'll be exploring all of those, but there were also some bug fixes as well, which was pretty common as the game was being polished to get it ready for 1.0. So let's have a little look around in these chests and see what we can find. Aha! Endstone is now called Endstone. Well, at least I now know what it's called. In one of these chests here in organics, maybe... Yes, lily pads are now green. They were grey in this inventory before because they didn't have any biome tinting applied. Now they appear as green. We're going to have to inspect the silk touch chest here because I'm pretty sure that some of these items here will have changed, although I'm not sure exactly which. So I've preloaded my inventory here with a bunch of blocks and we'll test them all out. Well, working backwards here, let's see how we go. First, we have the lit furnace. Now, when I placed it down, it still retained its lit state. So let's see exactly what happens when we pick it back up again. I wonder if this will still retain the block data. It's really hard to tell in the inventory here. So the best thing to do is to place it back down. And no, of course, it's lost its lit furnace state. Oh, well, this one previously was a lit furnace block. I mean a lit redstone ore, but now it's turned back into a regular redstone ore. So let's just light it up again, just like that. And we'll see what happens this time. When I pick this up, yoink, we get ourselves a redstone ore. Now the best way to test this, I think, is to open up this chest and see where it lands when we shift click it back into this chest. This is regular redstone ore and this is lit redstone ore. So let's see which pile it goes into lit redstone ore so we're still able to get the lit redstone ore with this silk touch trick okay spawner and i'm pretty sure i know exactly what's going to happen here we're going to lose our little old spawner aren't we oh, it's going to be a sad sad day unfortunately we can no longer collect spawners oh well let's try out the double slab block oh yep we can still pick up that one that is great and the silverfish block let's see what happens oh that still works wow I was under the impression that that did not work in this version, so my silverfish farm wasn't a wasted effort after all. Today what I want to have a look at is a new set of features added to an existing feature in the game, and that feature is the achievements. The achievements were added in code in beta 1.4, but they weren't made available in the game until beta 1.5, and we, we set off and we got all the achievements way back then, and since then we've been waiting for new achievements to arrive in the game code. Now the interesting thing is if I go into the achievement tree, you'll see all of my existing achievements here, and I actually had to re-get these because unfortunately Unfortunately, in these early versions, the game statistics are not stored in the same place as the world save. So if you move your files and forget about the statistics one, sometimes you can just lose it. So I did have to run through all of these again and build them all back up to the pre-release 4 level. And you'll see that there are some flashing ones around here, some brand new achievements which we'll explore in a moment. But before we do, I just want to talk about this one, Sniper Duel. I can't remember if I've mentioned it before, but this one was added in beta 1.8, but for some reason it's not possible to get. And believe me, I have tried and failed to get this. I've measured the distance perfectly, I've lined it all up correctly, I've killed the skeleton, it just doesn't work. I've even tried some of the tips people said where you have to be fighting with the skeleton first and then go away to 50 blocks distant and then kill it. None of that works. And apparently this one has been bugged out ever since it was added in beta 1.8 and it remains bugged out until at least release 1.1. So for now, Sniper Duel is just not possible. But let's explore the rest of the tree here. Looks like we've exhausted all of these avenues here, but I can see that after Acquire Hardware, we have a brand new diamond related one. It's called Diamonds. Diamonds! Acquire diamonds with your iron tools. All right, so before we explore all of the others, I think it's time to explore the achievement tree, get all of the achievements, and then feel a really big sense of accomplishment. Going out hunting for diamonds gave me a great reason to replenish my supplies, and it didn't take me long to find these. These aren't too far from the base. 
but I didn't really pick up very much. This is all I managed to get on my excursion out here at the moment, but I did find them. So let's head over and see if we can pick these up and we'll have a closer look and see what the enchantment says to do. I mean, the advancement, the uh, achievement. It's very dark in here. Okay, so the achievement actually says, where is it now? Diamonds. Acquire diamonds with your iron tools. I bet you that's not necessary, but I've brought an iron pickaxe all the same, just to do it properly, do it officially. Let's get this. Aha! Diamonds. Now I'm going to silk touch all the rest. Oh, nearly lost it. Well, you know what? That was pretty easy, but let's see what else the game has for us in the achievement tree now. So after we've taken diamonds, we've got Enchanter. Let's explore that one. Enchanter, use a book, obsidian and diamonds to construct an enchantment table. Well, this is an interesting one because I have loads and loads of enchantment tables thanks to the bug <laughs> that Jeb introduced in a previous version where the enchantment table was added. But we can still craft one if we take some obsidian and up here somewhere we should have a bunch of books and we do. We're also going to need some diamonds for this one. So oh, we've only got one. We'll have to crack open one of these diamond blocks right here because we need at least two. I think this this should be enough from what I remember. All right. Obsidian goes like this in an upside down T. We need a book at the top and then a diamond on each side. And we've crafted ourselves an enchantment table. We've got enchanter. Kind of a waste of diamonds because I really do have lots of these. Obviously, the achievement tree is one way to help guide the player through the progression of the game. They can browse the achievement tree here and kind of understand that to get from one thing to the next thing requires a bit more work and learning of how the game should progress. So after we get Enchanter, the game is teaching us now that we can get Librarian, build some bookshelves to improve your enchantment table, and then once we've done that, we can enchant our tools and get Overkill, deal eight hearts of damage in a single hit. So we would need some sort of sharpness in order to do that. But I'm not a new player. I've already got my fully established base around me with farms and I've got access to all the items. But if I were a new player, I would have to harvest some sugarcane, convert the sugarcane into paper, create three books, harvest some logs, convert those into planks, and then place them in the crafting bench in the appropriate pattern to make ourselves a bookshelf librarian achievement get. The next achievement is Overkill. Deal eight hearts of damage in a single hit. Now I actually think it's nine, but it doesn't matter. We're going to totally decimate some kind of mob. To do this, we need some sort of high end sword, you know, like sharpness five. I've done enough enchanting in the last few episodes to last me a lifetime. So let's go kill a mob. Now let's see, something not too boring, something a little bit challenging. Let's see what we can find. No, 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 mm, nah, Whoa. no, mm, nah, I think, I think we've found our challenge. Okay, let's see if we can do this. Oh, ow, and over, overkill? <laughs> wow, this thing is strong. I thought I would definitely kill that. Ah, <laughs> oh, that was interesting. For the rest of what we have next, it looks like we need to go into the nether. So we need to go deeper, build a portal to the nether. Ta-da! I've already got one. I don't need to make a new one. Let's head in and see what we get. We need to go deeper. Achievement got. What happens next after we need to go deeper? We've got into fire, relieve a blaze of its rod and return to sender destroy a ghast with a fireball. Well, we'll be on the lookout for both of those. I might as well head down to where the blaze farm is, the nether fortress, and see if we can find one. I've actually been working on a few little adjustments to this corridor here because I hate going up and down this corridor. It takes so long. So now, oh, this doesn't work. You have to take this off and place it on the slant and then sort of get in while it's going and wait for it to go. Ah, oh, this is the life. Well, of course we've got our blaze farm here, but that would be boring. I want to hunt around in this nether fortress and see if I can find a blaze au naturel. It seems to me that the blaze no longer spawn in my nether fortress. That might have been a thing for a while now that I might have just overlooked, but it's very annoying because I wanted to hunt one down naturally like. But thankfully we still have access to our blaze spawner, which is whoop, right over here. Walking backwards is always a challenge, avoiding the pigmen for sure. Here it is. So we can still get our achievement, but... What's wrong with my nether fortress? 
And here we go, as soon as this one makes its way down, we should be able to relieve it of its blaze rod. There we go, into fire. We're almost through now, and the next one on my list is this one, Return to Sender. Destroy a ghast with a fireball. Now I've done this many times in the game already, but this is going to be the first time that it registers as an achievement. So I hear one, but now I've just got to find it. There it is, but it's too far away. Oh, I need to get over there. Come on, big boy. Oh, line up properly. I think the best way to do this is to get much closer to the ghast because it has this habit of moving. Come on, ghast face. Oh, there's two of them. Oh, where's the other one? It was right here. Let's see if we can get this one. Oh, I'm going to die. I'm in the crossfire. And you, come on, come on. Fire, fire, fire. Oh, no. This, this is the one, this is the one. This is the one. Come on. Oh. One more, one more. Yeah. Oh, come on, that was so close. This one's the one. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh. How do I get down? That was thirsty work. I think it's time for a drink. Oh, this is going to go down well. Mm -mm. Local brewery. Well, what amazing progress we've made today in the achievement tree. Let's have a little bit of a browse around here. You can see all the different achievements that I got. We do have a couple more to get, but these relate to the end. And there's more to discuss about the end in upcoming episodes. So I might as well leave those achievements until then. But for now, oh, look, I've still got fart bubbles. Until then, this is the end of today's episode. So I want to say a huge thank you to my wonderful patrons for supporting me. You could too, just by following the links down in the description box below. Or join the Discord, hit the super thanks button, or, or share the video. Any sort of thing that you do to support me really helps my channel grow. Thank you all very much. I'll see everyone in the next episode. Until then, this has been Bugman CX. You've been watching Minecraft The Journey. Bye-bye.